How's it going guys, Anfield here. Welcome to the guide to the mouse video. This is a follow up to the third mark session finish I did for the mouse. And essentially we're gonna just gonna talk about the tank in more depth, I suppose. Uh, specifically when it comes to like angling it and how the armor works uh, and also how to set the tank up so that you have the best possible setup going into battles with the mouse. Um, and you're a bit more prepared. Now, you can see here that I have the session statistics for the third mark on the mouse. Um, this is what numbers, because I'm sure I will get those questions, and I will probably still get those questions. So, yes, this program is called What Numbers. It's a great program. Go download it. Um, you guys ask me every time, and I feel like the answer is always there, but people don't look. So, anyways, let's get right into the mouse. So first things first, the basics. This is a side scraping angle. Basically I'm using this because uh, my opponent is quite far around this building to my right here, rather than to my left, in which case I would have to be a little bit more vertically facing this building. Uh, in this position I can easily back up and take a shot. Uh, when you're playing the mouse and you're side scraping, you wanna wait till the opponent fires, uh, they'll bounce off of you and then you can immediately pull out and take your shot and then pull straight back in again So you negate their fire the mouse has extremely thick sides and side armor turret So basically at this angle, it's completely impenetrable. So So like I said, I can easily back up like this uh, and get ready to take a shot So basically immediately what you would do is you would take a shot and then pull forward and then pull your turret back around. It's important not to sit here. Like I can be penned easily by either heat or even ABCR um, at this angle. My turret cheeks really do not hold up well. Uh, and so unfortunately this pattern will be able to pen no problem. You can see there the heat going right through, um, but also it doesn't matter. You can also be penned there with APCR. So it's important not to sit out and just stare at your opponents. Every time you fire, you need to immediately pull your turret back around because otherwise they're just going to pen you again and again and again. And your armor means nothing if you're just giving them easy uh, flat turret cheeks to pen. So it's important to pull back um, and not allow them to do this to you. So you won't always be able to side scrape against opponents. Uh, and if you are caught in the open or if you have to just basically move uh, from one position to another and there's no cover really to use, uh, try to come at opponents at an angle because you give yourself a slightly better chance to bounce if you're coming in at an angle. If you just make it flat and easy for them, uh, they're just going to pen you. Now here I'm stationary uh, and the reason for this is basically because I can't control both tanks at the same time. I'm using another account on my other computer. Um, so that I can actually run this training room so I can't play both at the same time so I can neither fire or I could move. I could auto run but then I maybe wouldn't get the footage that I wanted. Anyways, so uh, if I'm moving here and I'm you know wiggling a little bit maybe and I'm moving at this angle, it just is a lot harder for them to pen me. Even if they do manage to pen you, the point is to make them take longer to pen you because the, the whole thing about arm being irrelevant is nonsense. Uh, because sometimes your armor isn't just there to basically either block the shot or not you know it's like oh well it's useless if it doesn't block the shot if if it makes the opponent aim longer and take longer to shoot you then you gain so much because you can just lo they could lose out on so much dpm if they just have to take a long time to shoot you so you know when you're coming out in the open like this just angle yourself away a little bit and it'll help a lot so uh, another thing i kind of want to show you guys with the mouse is it's important to remember uh, just how tall you are and, and understand what that does to your shot angles. Uh, the mouse is basically one of the tallest tanks in the game and so uh, it often means that some angles become easier to pen versus others that become harder to pen. For example, the IS-7 lower plate, uh, because of your height, you actually make that a really steep angle when you're too close to it. Uh, so you can get some kind of annoying bounces, but because you're so tall, it does allow you to easily pen, or not easily, but depending on the angle, you can, you know, quite reliably get through the IS-7's upper front plate here. Uh, whereas if you were, say, if I was a 62A, for example, trying the same shot, I would be bouncing because it's too low to the ground. Um, but because the mouse is so tall, it makes the angle, you know, flatter, uh, which is something that you can utilize in any tank when you're, you know, you know, let's say you're higher ground or whatever, you're on a piece of rubble and you're coming over at a tank, um, you can negate a lot of the armor sloping uh, just because of your height. 
So yeah, it's it's pretty cool um, to be able to do that, and you know you can use the height of the mouse to your advantage as much as possible, uh, and the AP is fine. Um, but if I try, you know, to do this and I, I want to be more reliable, you can always just load APCR. Um, unfortunately, 246 pen isn't so great, so uh, you can use the APCR as well. So just to show you another example here, here's an IS-4. Um, and this is uh, something that has quite a thick uh, front plate. So, you know, with a lot of tanks, you if you can't hit the lower plate and you have to shoot the front plate, that can be quite difficult to pen it. Whereas, again, the mouse is so tall that you sort of look down on it and you make what would be a sloped angle, you make it flat instead. Um, so just showing that as an example uh, so that if you're, you know, facing some of these tanks, you can kind of understand how these angles work. So here's... Um, this and this is actually even though like obviously when it's angled like this it's a little flatter but because the slope here is negated you can even easier pen it than some other tanks that might even need heat to get through um, and this is another example where you can just you're so tall you can quite easily overmatch that turret it's not that easy to overmatch the IS-4 turret from a lot of tanks um, but the mouse does it quite well because again it's so tall that it allows you to do so Okay, so moving on to the loadout. Uh, for equipment, I have obviously the rammer, that goes without saying. Uh, now the next two are more interesting, the super heavy spall liner, that's to prevent your tank from basically bleeding crew members to HE shots uh, from artillery or other tanks that might sling HE at you. Um, I like to have uh, rations, but I put the rations over the med kit for this so it's important to have the um, super heavy spall liner to prevent crew loss and yeah so the vents is nice because basically with the rations you're trying to improve as much as you can on the tank like you know I do with a lot of tanks um, this is to general improvement is just really nice for the mouse um, now interestingly I don't have a vertical stabilizer like a lot of tanks would have uh, and that's because the mouse turret moves so slow, you literally have no bloom. It's almost fully aimed most of the time. Well, exaggerating a little bit, but it's really quite good. Um, and with, you know, uh, brothers in arms or sisters in arms, plus vents and, you know, rations, it makes up for quite a lot. So, moving on to the loadout here. Uh, this is basically what you would consider a cheap loadout. Uh, where you have standard consumables plus the automatic firing signature, which you should have regardless of tank. Uh, no reason not to have that. Uh, but as for the ammo, I mean, honestly, the mouse has so much in regards to ammo that you really don't need um, to worry about not having enough of one round. You can have more HE if you want. I don't really find that I have much use for HE because of, you know, the reload speed. So um, if we move on to the well what would more resemble what I used to actually mark the tank um, the ammo doesn't really need to change much uh, you can load more APCR if you want but um, basically uh, the change here is the chocolate as well as the large repair kit um, I mean I guess ultimately I talked a bit about why I have the rations over the med kit there uh, with a super heavy spall liner and a large repair kit is pretty self-explanatory um, this one uh, coming up is basically, you know, you can load more APCR. So, I mean, that's up to you. If you want to load more APCR, you can. You have so many rounds and your reload takes a long time. So, I don't really think it matters how much of each you load. Uh, just do whatever you're comfortable with. And finally, on to the crew. This is my full female crew. Uh, it was originally for the Waffentrager. I, I moved it over to the mouse when I was three marking the mouse for the lulls. Uh, I don't know that I actually changed that much on the crew. Maybe I changed a couple things. I honestly don't remember. Uh, but you do need brothers in arms. So sister in arms here is fine. It's not like, you know, it's um, something you wouldn't have otherwise. So you need, really need that brothers in arms, you know, like rations and vents to, just to improve the tank as much as possible. Um, everything else, you know, six cents, you need six cents on everything. So, you know, that's there. Repairs is really important because obviously people shoot your tracks, you'll get already they cheat, uh, and you'll lose things that, you know, you mostly your tracks, I suppose, that you will need to have quick repairs for, prevent people from getting around you and other things like that. 
Um, the driver doesn't have any gunnery skills because, again, I was talking about the gun already being pretty good about being aimed in most of the time. Uh, so I've gone for the driver skills, which for obvious reasons the mouse needs uh, so it can move as quickly as possible. Uh, and the loaders both have safe stowage. You know, that's, I guess, if I lose one. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, you know, that's the only really u mainly useful one. I guess Adrenaline Rush is pretty decent because the mouse has a lot of hit points, so you could do Adrenaline Rush on one of them. I have it being trained at the moment. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the crew. Um, after that, after a lot of this stuff, uh, I would pretty much go firefighting, I guess. Um, you don't really get set on fire that much, but it's useful to have when people get around you and they keep peppering you. Um, so that wraps up my video for the mouse, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was a really interesting experience to 3Mark the mouse, to say the least. Uh, you know, it's not it's not super bad. You know, it's not like the Type 5 Heavy, which is absolutely awful. And I really don't know if the buffs it's getting in 9.15 will help that tank. But the mouse is okay. You know, it does struggle on a lot of maps. And I would like to see a few things improved on the tank. Mainly the DPM would be nice. Uh, but yeah. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought and whether you're a mouse player or not. And I'll catch you next time.